My week in a life as a molecular biology intern was mostly just me in a lab coat and going on trips with my friends. So in this video, I'm going to attempt, keyword, attempt to give you more insight into like my hour by hour life in the lab. We'll see how successful I am at that because I'm awkward and yeah, I'm surrounded by adults. <laughs> Also, if you're wondering, huh, why does Hannah look just a little bit different today? It's because I don't like to wear makeup in the summer. And yeah, anyway, let's go! So hours in the kind of lab I work in are pretty much up to you. I usually go in around 9.30 every morning, but it's mostly like, a, and try to get your work done while other people are here. There should be some crossover, but... It's mostly up to you, which is really nice. Uh, like I mentioned, I typically go in around 9.30 in the morning and leave anywhere between 5 and 7 o'clock. Yesterday, we finally, after a month and a half, got our protein expressed in E. coli uh, successfully, we think. So I'm gonna go in today, do some colony PCR, and get some petri dishes. So PCR is a molecular process by which you take a template strand of DNA and you multiply it like billions and billions of time and times and you go from like this much DNA to like so much DNA. So basically what we're doing with colony PCR is we're throwing in some bacteria colonies that we've grown up that hopefully have our gene of interest. If we put those in to a PCR reaction with some primers, if the gene of interest is there, we should hopefully be able to see it on a gel. It's kind of mostly just a time saver. And after that, I'll just send some emails, do some research and stuff while those cook. Okay, I just spent the morning after that preparing PCR and a gel so that I can look at my PCR products and see if I have anything interesting. I uh, sent some emails for a while, did some work on my computer, research, and then I went to lunch. And now I'm gonna go run my gel. So right now I'm setting up an agarose gel electrophoresis and honestly I make one of these almost every single day in the lab, they're very common. It's a way of both visualizing and quantifying uh, the DNA that you have. So it does this by moving negatively charged DNA uh, through an agarose gel. Smaller strands of DNA will travel farther down the gel, while larger strands of DNA will not travel as far. So you can quantify the lengths of DNA that you have by putting in a ladder on the sides. The ladder has known DNA lengths that you can compare your unknown DNA to. And we turn that voltage on, look for the bubbles in the back to know things are moving, and, yeah, and then we're good to go. So I usually let mine run for about an hour at 100 volts and then I take it down to get imaged. I'm sorry, I'm just removing some bubbles there. Um, but anyway, and then I take it down to get imaged with UV light. So I probably got nothing from that, but... I'm gonna go sit down, talk to my PI, brainstorm the game plan, and uh, we'll see what happens. Just had a quick meeting with my PI about game plan for the rest of the day and tomorrow. I have to streak some plates because maybe I got good results. I don't know. My supervisor isn't here today and we'll be back for a week. We'll see what I end up doing.
a quick little lab tour. There's a recycling bin, uh, our biohazard bucket, uh, uh, sink, I guess. Yeah, okay. And oh, yeah, that's my uh, lab notebook where I write down everything ever, which is actually really helpful and super necessary. Okay, bye. I'm stupid and left my ID in the lab, so gotta go back to get it. This is called mental deterioration. It is a Saturday morning. I came in to pellet some cell stuff um, so no one else is here, which is why I'm speaking out loud in the lab. Um, anyway, so a lot of people have asked me what I've actually learned about the scientific process since being here? The answer is a lot, like a whole lot. It's so much different being in an actual lab working on your own project than it is to like be in the lab at school or in a controlled environment or an environment that's designed for a student. I've taken some pretty intense lab courses, but um, the thing about those is you always have TAs that are there to help you and tell you what to do and check your work, um, and everything's like pre-made for you, and it's, in, at least in my experience, it's a big step-by-step -step process, like you do this, and then you do this, and you do this, and you follow your procedure. When you're actually in the lab, you're writing your own procedures, or you're doing research to find what procedures may work, and then you do it, and then something goes wrong, and then you have to make a thousand judgment calls along, along the way about what to do next. I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm at the point now where I've been here long enough that I you know my supervisors and um, colleagues, I guess that's what I call them, are like really encouraging me to be able to make my own judgment calls and use what I know about my project to um, figure out how I want to tackle the next step. You know, and that's really cool. That's a lot of freedom and trust. You know, it's not a, you know, go ahead and try this. It's like, no, now you actually have to do it. You have to take what you've learned, what you've researched, and apply it. Like, for example, my supervisor has been gone for the past few days and will be gone for the next few days because she's, like, taking her son on college tours. Um, and, you know, she she left and she didn't give me like a step-by-step -step or anything. She was like, these are the goals. We had a brief discussion with her and my PI about what we have and what we're trying to do. And we're finally at the point where we're like getting the results we wanted. We accept, we expressed our protein and we're starting assays. And I had to figure out how to do those assays all by myself. And you know, there were there were guidelines in the literature, but I, you know, I had to pick the different conditions, and I had to write it all out, and I had to find my reagents, and like it was a very individual process. Like I wasn't advised by anyone when I was making that up, and I don't know, it's just a lot of individual stuff, and I've learned that. I mean, I always knew this, but I've been experiencing it firsthand that it takes a lot of failure, you know, before you're going to succeed, especially like in my project this summer. I'm looking at a protein, I'm looking at a gene that no one's ever looked at before. Like, I can't just like copy a step-by-step -step procedure all the way. There has to be a thousand judgment calls mixed in. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like and subscribe and all that. I have a week in my life as a molecular biology intern as well and a bunch of other college and random videos that you might enjoy. Anyway, I hope you have a great day, and bye.